Welcome to the cockpit of a Tesla Model 3. This is the storied $35,000 electric sedan we've all been waiting for, but this one costs a little bit more. This is the long range edition starting at $44,000 and with some other accessories, that she comes out closer to $57,000. We're going to walk you through all the interior details in here because this car is very different than anything else on the road. Starting with how you unlock it, this is the key. This is an RFID tag, a lot like you might have in a hotel. You tap this on the B pillar outside the car and it will unlock it for you. Then once you're inside the car, you tap it here in the center console and at that point you can then drive away. This is nice because it's very small. You can stick it in your wallet and it's very cheap. They only cost a couple of bucks. So if you lose it, no big deal. It's also very easy to add new ones to the car if you want to and maybe give these out to let your friends borrow the car. Problem of course is you can't push any buttons on here to unlock the car from far away. But there's another solution for that too. The car can actually pair to your phone over Bluetooth and your phone then becomes the key. So as you approach the car, it will connect to your phone and unlock itself for you automatically. That works pretty well, but there have been more than one occasion where I've walked up to the car and had to stand there for a couple of seconds waiting for the car to pair to my phone and then unlock itself. Hopefully Tesla will speed that up going forward. But using the app, you can also do other things on here like unlock the car remotely if you want to or lock it, flash the lights if you're not sure where you parked. And you can set the climate control on here as well so your car is heated up or cooled down for you before you get in the car. Pretty much everything else that you do once you get in the car is through this 15 inch touchscreen that's mounted in the center of the dashboard. And almost everything because there are almost no other physical controls in this car. The majority of things that you'll need to do frequently are on the left side of the display. About a third of the display here has been marked off for display information. Right now it's showing me that we've got a couple of doors open. But as we're driving, this display becomes your autopilot information, showing you the sensors that the car is seeing, if it detects a car ahead of you, if it can see the lines in the road, things like that. And where you see the P here indicating that we're in park, that becomes your speedometer because there is no gauge cluster behind the steering wheel. You need to look over here instead. That actually works better than you might think but there are some problems with this interface that we're going to get through. So you can swipe through different interfaces here to get through different things. And the first one, you can toggle the camera if you want to see what's behind you. Hit this to bring up the charging information. So if you're sitting on a supercharger, you can get information about how that's going right now. We're at 65%. And by the way, supercharging is not free on the Model 3. You'll have to pay for it. Or you can do voice recognition by tapping this microphone. Navigate to Starbucks. Now this works actually really nicely. You can speak in an intuitive way. You don't have to say any special commands. It works very quickly as well, so long as you have an internet connection. If your phone is offline, if the car is offline, voice recognition simply doesn't work. And it doesn't even tell you it doesn't work. It just stops responding. That's a little bit unfortunate. Swipe right to bring up the windshield wiper controls, which are, yes, here on the touchscreen. You can quickly miss by tapping the button on the side. But if you want to actually control them manually, not use the automatic system, you tap here. And at that point, you can adjust the speed of the wipers or put them on intermittent mode. Yes, you have to use the touchscreen for that. Swipe again to get to your trip meter, which you have quite a few in here, as a matter of fact. And then swipe one more time to get to the tire pressure information. Finally, if you're in the middle of a phone call, there's actually a fifth screen that appears right here. And that's important to note because if you're calling somebody and you need to turn on the windshield wipers, it's three swipes to the left and then a tap to turn on the wipers. And I mention that because that's exactly what happened to me as I was driving here on the phone misting and the wipers didn't turn themselves on so I had to do it manually. Three swipes and a tap to turn on wipers is just unsafe in my opinion. On the right we've got Tesla's navigation system which is very quick and intuitive to use. You have satellite imagery if you want to or you can go to a map information. The traffic information is quite good on here and again you've got the voice recognition which works quite well. Digging a little bit deeper we can now get into the settings for the car and there are, are quite a few just like we've seen on the Model S going for everything from turning on the lights, turning off the fog lights, locking and unlocking if you walk away, settings like that, driving modes, how you want your steering to be, if you want a lot of resistance or low resistance, how much regenerative braking you want is all in here, and you can turn on auto steer and auto lane change and autopilot. The really important thing to note on this screen is the cruise follow distance. This is the distance between you and the car ahead of you that autopilot will maintain for you. This is something that you could traditionally adjust on a Tesla just by twisting the end of the cruise control stock, but on the Model 3, they've gotten rid of that stock. So if you want to change that distance, you actually need to tap into vehicle settings, go over to autopilot, and then hit plus or minus on this screen. And that is, again, something that's unsafe to do while you are driving. And I had to change this quite a bit, depending on traffic conditions and weather. Having to go through three menus to do that, again, is just not a good thing. You can mainly set the power brake and also adjust the headlights through here as well. And finally, open the glove box. 
Climate control settings are here as well, automatic. And if you want to adjust the vents, you do that through the touchscreen as well, just like the Porsche Panamera. Seat heaters are here, front and rear defrosters, and the music interface, which slides up from the bottom. You've got slacker radio, streaming, tune in as well, and Bluetooth pairing here. And finally, you can very quickly and easily pair your Bluetooth devices even while you're driving, which I admit is a pretty nice thing. That's everything that you can do on the display, and there's really not that much else that you can do in the car because there aren't many physical controls. On the steering wheel here, we've got a couple of scroll wheels like you might find on a mouse. Left is volume control. On the right, you click this in to bring up the voice control, and you click the left one to mute or unmute the sound. You can also click them left or right to skip tracks. On the left, we have the turn signal, and you can flash your headlights, put on the high beams, or use the quick mist for the wiper, but again, if you want to actually turn the wipers on, you need the touchscreen for that. And then on the right is the Tesla shifter to go reverse or drive. And this is how you engage cruise control in the Model 3. Double tap this down to engage cruise control and turn on autopilot. Turn it up again to cancel. There's actually a lot more storage in the Model 3 than the Model S, which is nice. We've got cup holders all over the place. A lot of cubbies. You can pop this open and you've got a nice deep convex system here. Flip this up and there's a nice set of two chargers here. With well, Right now we've got lightning and a USB Type-C but you can actually flip this up and change the cables that are in there. So if you have a different type of you're still rocking a micro USB phone, you can plug that in here too. In the back seat, there's plenty of headroom, even for me, and I sit pretty tall in a car. That's largely thanks to this glass roof. The rear seats fold down, giving you even more cargo space. And up front, we've got the frunk, which gives you a couple more cubic feet of space for an overnighter bag or something like that. The interior of the Model 3 is very distinctive, and I like it a lot. I love the simplicity. But I have to say that too many compromises have been made in the name of design simplicity. There simply needs to be more physical controls, especially for things like cruise control and windshield wipers. This car needs to be safe before it needs to be a nice design icon. And I think it's a little bit unfortunate because otherwise, it's a really great car. Thanks for joining our in-depth walkthrough of the Tesla Model 3. Make sure you check out our full review on YouTube and subscribe to our channel for a lot more reviews like this.